I'm now going to ask Sarah Romeo, who is a uh, currently serving as a librarian at Dwight Marvin Library. Sarah's worn lots of different hats over the last few years. We're very grateful for all her skills. And um, Sarah, would you mind unmuting? And um, if you could talk a little bit about the kinds of supports that faculty can um, expect to find on a good day at the library. Absolutely. Um, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, I, Brenda, a lot of what I was going to say you already covered, so I hope <laughs> I'll, I'll be quick because we're already <laughs> behind schedule. Um, basically, uh, just that we've gone over a lot today <laughs> um, between uh, the different types of OER and licensing and authoring and searching. Um, and the underlying uh, crux of what I was going to say is that the librarians, myself, Stephanie Ross, Amy Hathaway, Cynthia Coleman, and Brenda, we are all here to help you. Mm -hmm. um, as Brenda mentioned right now, I'm filling in for Stephanie during her maternity leave, but usually one of my primary responsibilities is I'm kind of second in command to Brenda for the OER initiative. I think I just gave myself a new title. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, so that is normally part of uh, what I do at the college. So um, I'm here to troubleshoot any types of questions or concerns. You can shoot me an email about pretty much anything mm -hmm. and either I'll be able to answer it or I'll try to figure out who will. A lot of the time I tell you to contact Mike Daly. Um, but uh, generally we are all here to help you um, search, to troubleshoot, to evaluate sources, um, all that kind of stuff. We're also here to help you find those really important supplemental materials. As Brenda's going to mm -hmm. uh, maybe has described and will describe, um, we, we count 51% of the course needs to be OER, and that's sort of our unofficial number in order to qualify for a stipend. So if you're, you know, you need to make up that other 49%, um, we're here to help you find those uh, course resources. Um, Ebooks are great, articles, videos, and things like that. Um, and these are all traditional uh, copyrighted materials that we can use. So basically, it's just that uh, remember that your liaison librarians, Brenda and myself, we're all here to assist you to find what you need. Sarah, thank you so much. So I, I wanted to just um, share with you a little reaction reality check from the library. And I, I feel it's necessary to share this with the group. Um, due to the, the college's serious um, economic climate, the library, unfortunately, right now has a number of open lines, um, uh, vacant positions. These include the OER librarian, which is, an, which is an official title. And that position has been empty since um, September. In addition, two of our other subject specialist librarian positions are empty because of resignations that occurred just prior to COVID. So we're very short staffed right now. You heard Sarah say she's filling in for a maternity leave. And so she is not in her official position right now. So I wanted to just share, to share that with you. So if there's a delay in our ability to respond to you, if we can't be as timely as we usually are, as we want to be. I hope you'll understand uh, the position we're in. And I hope you will also help us advocate for ourselves that some, at least our OER librarian position can be filled in the near future because our ability to provide faculty support is absolutely impacted by this long-term vacancy. So just a reality that we're facing. Okay, enough with the sob story. Let me go back to my slides. So um, that this was uh, Sarah's portion. And um, of course, as you know, as you've seen already today, um, we have this wonderful OER guide and there's a tremendous amount of information in here that can answer a lot of your questions or get you started. Um, but again, come to us um, when, as you need to. Um, the other, the next person, for reasons I don't understand, I'm not able to advance my slides right now, but this isn't that important, okay? The next person uh, who was supposed to be speaking today is John Heiser. Uh, many of you know he's the Director of Creative uh, Services here at the college, um, formerly known as the Director of the Print Shop <clears throat> and other things. And um, 
um, John wasn't able to be with us today because of a family emergency, um, but he was going to just share with you that the, the print shop and the bookstore are working in partnership with departments, with the library, with faculty. So if there are occasions when you need printed copies for your students, there's a variety of options that are available for you. That said, I just wanna share with you that often faculty estimation for student need for print is grossly overestimated, okay? So um, you, we, we, I think I've mentioned early on, the library has reserve uh, print copies of OpenStax textbooks on reserve. They have never been borrowed, okay? Students find it satisfactory to find the online availability, but if you need print, there's options for you, okay? Uh, but keep your numbers really small. Our recommendations are no more than 10% of your students, total number of students signed up. And actually, I think you could probably cut that in half. I would say maybe 5% of your students are gonna wanna print textbook. Okay, um, there's information about working with the print shop and the bookstore on our OER guide. So I won't go into that in any more detail today. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to share my slide again, even if I can't advance. I wanna share it to you because now we're gonna talk about what's left because we're almost done. Okay, so what do you need to do today? Um, you need to complete the intentions document that is available on the OER guide. How is that for forcing you to go there? Okay, there's a section called forms, OER forms, and the intentions guide, or sorry, the intentions document is there. If we were in person, I would be holding this up and saying, you would have gotten this as a handout. And I'd say, you take the blue page. The blue page is the intentions document. This is what I need from you in order to document that you attended today in order uh, for those of you eligible for a stipend, um, this is what I need for that documentation. In this intention, in the uh, workshop completion and intention document, you just let us know, yeah, I think I am gonna adopt an OER or I don't think I'm going to right now um, because I don't think there's anything in my content area. I don't have time. I don't teach a course with a textbook. You know, I'm retiring, whatever. We, you know, there's no pressure but just let us know, yeah, I think I'm gonna do it or I don't think I am. If you are gonna do it, let us know what you might need next for supports. Now, the fillable PDF um, document that's up on the OER guide asks for a signature. Um, I know right now when I'm working at home, I don't have a way to print things and I don't expect you to either. So if you could please fill out the fillable portions, Okay, save that and email that to me from your Hudson Valley email, and that will serve as your signature. Okay, I encourage you to do that today so you don't forget. Next week, I'm filling out the paperwork for the stipend payments. Okay, so if I don't have your document back by, uh, I would say probably the end of the day, Monday, it means you'll have a long wait uh, for a stipend. So um, it's just uh, really quick. It's easy. It'll take you a minute to fill out and then send it to me, please. Okay. There's so, a link that, in the chat. Sorry to Brenda. Yeah, oh, thank you, Sarah. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So again, I'm not able to advance my slide. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to advance my slide manually and then reshare it. Sorry about this awkwardness. Um, Let's take a look at the next document that's on the forms guide. Okay, so the next one is, it's called a memo of agreement um, because you have to, you have to um, sign off to say, yeah, you've gotten permission from your DC, you completed the workshop, a few other things that you say, yes, you agree to. And then there's the really simple part of this form. It is so simple, faculty think, it can't possibly be true because it's so easy to do. We are not here to put up barriers. We want to make this a simple process. All you have to do is tell us who you are, what course you're teaching, 
um, the current textbook you're using and what you propose to use instead that's open. Please give us enough information so that we can go in to, usually it's online, and verify that the source or sources you want to use are open, okay? We have to make sure that they're consistent with the SUNY guideline for what is open. Generally, if there's a Creative Commons license um, uh, adhered or attached to what you want to, um, what you wish to adopt, you're all set, okay? So the library's role is verifying that the, the um, content that you are proposing to adopt is SUNY open compliant. That's all we do. We don't say, oh, this is lousy material. This is great. We don't know. You're the content expert, okay? You, you complete that form, send it to me or to Sarah, and then we do that analysis. And then if it meets the SUNY guidelines, we will send it to your DC. You and your DC have to have that conversation about whether the material you were proposing, whether that meets whatever your departmental textbook adoption guidelines are, that's between you and your DC. The library, the OER initiative is not involved in that, okay? We're not trying to insert ourselves in that. That is a departmental process that we respect. All we're doing is verifying that your materials are SUNY open. Um, and as Sarah mentioned, that the majority of the material that you're proposing to adopt is open. So when we say majority, that means 50%. Now you might be thinking, how do you decide it's 50%? Well, we ask you for approximate percentages. And if you say to us, 60% of what I'm gonna use is open and 40% is not, then we say you pass, that's a majority, 60% is majority. We do not put things on a scale. We do not count pages. We take your word for it, okay? So again, we are not trying to put up barriers um, and set thresholds that, that are high leaps for you. We want to encourage adoption and we're primarily focused on the, um, the verifying the openness of the resources that you're recommending, okay? I think most DCs are familiar with this and have gone through reviews. Our two newest DCs are actually here today. So um, Casey and Liz, if you have any questions about this, um, let me know. But basically, if you say it's okay and we say it's open, you're good to go. Now, there are um, stipends available to faculty who successfully propose OER adoption, okay? What makes successful? Well, that what you put in is confirmed open by the library review team, okay? We go out and check for those Creative Commons um, attributions and your DC has approved it, okay? That's, um, or, or that, that it's a majority, then you're okay. And you will, we will process a $400 stipend for you per course. It's one time. So if you teach that course every semester, you get one $400 stipend for it not every semester, okay? You can put in for multiple courses if you'd like, okay? Right now we have a limit of six. And we have a couple faculty, believe it or not, who have adopted OERs in six different courses. So they've maxed out on what they can receive. Now, here's the reality. We have a limited amount of OER funds left. These are all the SUNY funds. This is external funding. The college has not contributed to the initiative fund, and I don't think this is the year we're gonna get a contribution from them, okay? So when the money's gone, the money's gone. Um, you're welcome to check in with me about whether there's a stipend. I mean, frankly, I'm hoping faculty will um, continue to propose regardless of whether there's a stipend, but the reality is at some point, the stipend funds are gonna run out. 
Um, I think right now there's stipends for, I think that with the budget and with the attendance today, um, there's probably at least 15 stipends that are available for course adoption. But beyond that, I'm not sure. Um, so uh, there's not a deadline for submitting your proposal, but all I can, you know, I just want to emphasize there's a finite um, pot of money. And after that, it'll be, thank you so much. I hope you'll go forward. Unfortunately, right now, we can't provide a stipend for you because there's no funding for that. Um, let me stop sharing and let me just take a look at my slides and make sure that I covered everything. I believe I did and I would be happy now. Look, we've got 10 minutes left. Um, I would be happy to answer questions that you have um, either about the process, about any of the content you've seen today. I can pull up the chat and see if there's questions. Um, but otherwise, I think we're we've we've covered we covered all I set out to cover today. Um, I'm going to answer the the last question that came in on um, the chat is the stipend funding renewed annually. It depends on what um, SUNY receives and the overall state budget. Um, so we we have not gotten SUNY funding this year. Um, so we're we're at the bottom of our 60, 65 to seventy thousand dollar pot right now. Um, so Jason, unfortunately, I, I don't know about funding in the future. Um, I had to step I had to step out for a minute because my kids came home from school. So yeah, I didn't. Um, the form, um, the intentions form. Yes. Do we email that to you. Yes, please email okay. that to me, Sarah. Yep. You can just um complete the fillable part. You, yep. you don't need to print it and sign it and scan it. Okay. Just fill that out and send it to me. So okay. b dot b dot hazard at hbcc .edu. All right. Thank and you. Ideally, by the end of the day, Monday. Okay, good, thanks. Um, so uh, let's see, let me get to some other questions that might be in um, chat. Um, I'm looking, I see comments. I'm not sure there's questions um, specifically I need to answer. Uh, can I search to, can I search for materials without creating accounts in each platform? Yes, you may. The accounts are needed um, if you want to get access to instructor or faculty material, because obviously they don't want to give all the solutions, right, to the, the test banks that are out on the open web. They also want to know your interest, you might be interested in their material so they can follow up with you. So um, you can freely search, but you may not be able to see the instructor ancillary materials without an account. <clears throat> um, Brenda, may I ask you a question? Of course. Um, so at this point, um, it seems that the 120 instructors communications that we have selected our textbook. Yeah. I have already let my DC know that this is the textbook that we are thinking of using for the yeah. So if we've completed the intentions document and now yeah. I've sent it to you already, but okay. if I want to work on the next step of it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Does the document first go to my DC or do I first have to meet with you briefly about the textbook that we have chosen? You well, in this day and age, Basha, we're we're not really meeting. So and if you're it, you know, you went to the workshop today. If you, and if you found a textbook that you and your colleagues think is a great equivalent and it's open, you see you find that Creative Commons attribution on it. Just send me your proposal, your memo of agreement, and you should be all set. Um, the library review team will verify the open. If you're using that 100%, that takes care of the majority thing. And then um, we'll either go back to your DC or if your DC wants to let us to sign it and you send it to me with your DC signature on it, then you're good to go. 
Okay, so it will be okay for us to write down that we are going to be using it 100%, let's say. Yes. Put a percent. So if we put a percentage on it, I don't know, 60% or 70%, then the rest of the materials, we don't have to consult you about them, right? That's right. You can say 30% from, you know, supplemented from library collections or other sources, you know, right. non-open sources. Okay. And we're not going to go back to you and say, what are those? Okay. Um, okay. But we might say, if you need some help, let us know, but you're good. The other thing, just to clarify, Pasha, if there's six of you who are all doing that, you can each submit, if everybody's here at the workshop today, everybody can submit, a. each of you can submit a um, the uh, memo of agreement and be eligible for the stipend. Okay. So it's not just one person, but it can be everybody who's teaching. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Brenda, there's a question in the chat about yes. um, distance learning, I think, and putting information into Blackboard. Okay, all right. I don't see the question, but what I can tell you is, you know, I, it occurred to me that I should have had DL here for, as a um, someone to make some, re, as a stakeholder to make some remarks. Um, so I think you could reach out to to any of the DL people. I would say, you know, you could use their new ticket system and just say you you would like to, um, you have a course cartridge from OpenStax or Lumen or whomever, who, you know, can I get some help with that? That's what I would suggest you do, um, KCL, um, with your question. Linda Ryder, as you might guess, has been wonderful about helping, but some of her staff um, would probably be doing the same thing. I hope that helps. I'll just jump in, Brenda, and add yeah, they're all you. very familiar with OER yeah. and the platform, so they'll know what you're talking about. Whoops. Brenda, I'm sorry if I missed this. On the form, it says meet with an OER community review member. Who yeah, are those people? Well, right now it's me and Sarah. Oh, so okay. you, you don't need to meet with us if you're, you know, you're straightforward. You've been to this session. We, we do that more. Well, those are also in the early stages. So if you don't need to meet with us, that's fine. You found what okay. you needed. You don't have questions. Seems pretty straightforward. No need to meet with us. Mm -hmm. And and as a follow-up to that, again, I'm processing a lot of things at once on a Friday with three minutes left. Can you yes. guys, the, the percentage thing, that just means, can you say again what that means? Yeah, so we wanna know, you know, the, the SUNY guideline is the majority has to be open to be for, for faculty incentives. So like what we don't wanna have happen is that you still have your students by an expensive book, and then you use um, like a small percentage of open. That's, you know, that's a step forward, but that doesn't put you in the stipend eligible range. So but if, we're gonna, if we're not going to have them buy something and we're only going to use other things, that it's 100% open. I didn't know if the 100% meant with this textbook I found, I'm using 100% of it. No, no, it means I'm using 100% open. Got it. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Sure. And we don't have a micrometer or a, you know, a weight. We're, we're really trusting you. You know, the, the idea is it's the majority. So uh, the majority should be open. Okay, other questions? What's for dinner? That's my question. Okay, boy, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for your attention today. Um, please reach out to me if you have questions. Please reach out to me before you reach out to Sarah. She's not primarily OER right now. So, you know, feel free to contact me. It's I, fine. <laughs> I may rope Sarah in to answer your question, um, but please um, consider the library to be a source of support for you. I hope you have the tools you need now to get started. And um, I so appreciate your time spent this afternoon and I look forward to receiving your intentions forms uh, later today, tonight, over the weekend, or by the end of the day, Monday. Thanks so much, everybody. Great to see you. Take care.